Welcome to Parish and Community. My guest today is Joe Noya, who is a Jesuit scholastic uh, here in St. Louis. So welcome, Joe. Thank you. So tell me about how you got to be a scholastic. What was the, that process for you? Yeah, it was kind of a, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a long story, actually, and with a, with a lot of twists and turns. Um, after six years of atheism and eventually coming back to the, uh, to the church, I started to kind of feel a, uh, a call, perhaps, to the, uh, to, to the Jesuits. And, uh, and I hated it. I absolutely hated it. <laughs> and um, I would run away from it as much as I could, uh, even to the point of uh, almost converting to Islam. I would, uh, <laughs> I would go to the local mosque for a couple months and meet with the imam. And uh, yeah, it was, it was this close to converting when I realized that I, that I wasn't really happy. <laughs> yeah. And so I, um, at that point, I made a, an appointment with a priest and uh, I said pretty much the, uh, the most arrogant thing I could think of to him. I, uh, I opened the conversation by saying, uh, I'm going through a crisis of faith right now. I've been flirting with Islam. I'm open to coming back to the church. Convince me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and God loved this priest. He didn't pull any punches. He said, I don't need to convince you to have faith. You got, you got plenty of faith as far as I could tell. Hmm. But you know who you are? You're the rich young man in the Gospels mm, mm, who doesn't want mm. to give up everything and follow Jesus. What are you so afraid of? Mm. <laughs> and for the first time, I said out loud, I am terrified that God is calling me to become a Jesuit. And once I said that, just this peace and serenity, and I decided to discern. Uh, but up to that point, I had never once in my life met a Jesuit. <laughs> so... Yeah. But, so uh, what was it about Jesuits that you felt so afraid of? Oh, it was the vows, especially mm. uh, the, the celibacy side of it. Like that yeah. was uh, not, not my lifestyle at all. Right. Um, but also at that time, you know, I was in the military. Mm. And just days after that conversation with that priest, I got orders to Jordan for about seven months. <laughs> and uh, while there... I met flesh and blood Jesuits hmm. for the first time and uh, began spiritual direction with them. And, and in, in those prayers and those conversations, I felt very much confirmed that this is, this is what God wants me to do. Okay. And then over time, realizing that, you know what, this is what I want to do too. Okay. But you, so, but you, just trying to get the, the full picture here, because you specifically said, I'm afraid that God wants me to be a Jesuit, but you had right. not really encountered a Jesuit before. So what was your, what, how, how did that thought first, first percolate of, uh-oh, maybe it's Jesuit? Yeah, so the, um, <laughs> that, that, that thought uh, came as a, really, as a joke. Mm. I was, uh, you know, I'd, uh, I'd been previously engaged and uh, when that relationship ended and I was, you know, dating around and nothing was really landing, I, <laughs> I said uh, to my parents on the phone, I said, it's a total joke. I didn't mean a word of it. I said, if by the time I retire from the military and I'm not married, do you think the Jesuits would take me? <laughs> but that, that stupid little joke planted a seed and it wouldn't go away. And, and, I, and I hated it, but eventually that seed, you know, became the stuff of kind of a fantasy. I would daydream about what it would be like to be a Jesuit. And none of my dreams were remotely accurate. I was going to ask, <laughs> how, does, how does the, what you have been experiencing in your studies now uh, la line up or not with, with what you thought it was going to be? Uh, not at all, but better. Okay. Really, and also like the image I had would have been totally unrealistic. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I was like, I never met a Jesuit or anything like that. And so I had this image, which is not remotely accurate, of like these guys and like these Benedictine habits just hanging out in libraries Got it. <laughs> and, yes, and, and writing yes. journal articles. <laughs> so much like every Jesuit I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. And, and you are in a, a unique position because you're taking your, your 
I, I, I want to say courses, I don't know what the, the, the course of study mm -hmm. uh, during the pandemic. So how has that affected how that process has been going for you and your, your fellow scholastics? Well, I mean, the, the studies, you know, just continues and uh, the studies are going well. I would say probably the, the most difficult side from us would be in the more interpersonal mm -hmm. areas. Like a lot of the, the classes are going to be online. So we miss the opportunity to get to know the other students yeah. better. And yeah. that, that's something that's important to us. Sure, and we, right. We, and then also just with the apostolic work that we do on the side, um, well, we're, we're really limited in uh, mm -hmm. the ministries we can be involved in. And that's, you know, that's, that kind of gets at you yeah, for a sure. while, but you know. It's part of it. Yeah. What is your uh, ministry while you're studying right now? So I, uh, I I help out at the uh, the outreach center at uh, the college church, you know, so so helping out over there, and which is good because that's actual face to face <laughs> interactions with people, and I really enjoy doing that. They're great people to work in there, and and it's uh, it's nice. It's it's really nice work, and uh, and also it it kind of helps to in in a personal sense to to kind of like the balance of you know doing all the brain work with with the academics to the more just human to human mm -hmm, mm -hmm. type stuff. How much longer do you have in your studies? Well, I just finished my first semester here. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so I, got, I got a little while. All right, yes. Um, now, full disclosure, I got to know you first through Twitter because I saw your name pop up and saw the SJ behind it. And since I'm working for a, a Jesuit institution, uh, once I started seeing your name and other names that had SJ behind it, I could figure out which ones were in St. Louis and which ones weren't, especially because you were also then listed among the folks who came and sang uh, at the uh, Christmas Eve, our, our midnight mass, right? You were part of that, that scholastic choir. So, so thank you for doing that. Folks, folks were really appreciative that there was uh, a choir there. Um, but uh, tell me about uh, have, have, were you on Twitter before uh, you became a scholastic? So you've just oh, no. always had the SJ behind your name. What? So, so I don't know if you would even know how to answer what it's been like to be on Twitter with the SJ as opposed to not. But what what has some of those interactions been like? Well, um, you know, it, it's kind of a interesting. Um, the SJ is there, right? Like, and that that, that doesn't go away, and it, it's a, uh, it is an integral part of who I am now, and like 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 online, and and it it really informs and is is the lens through which I, I see all my, my my interactions with with the people uh, on, online. Um, I find that it can be a uh, both uh, a blessing and a, and a difficulty. Uh, mm. A blessing uh, in the sense that, all right, you know, with the SJ, people already kind of know where I stand. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like they, they, they are, the, there's a lot that just those two letters says. Um, but then on the, uh, the, the, the flip side, people can also just assume certain things about me. Sure. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Um, but it's, it's, it's good, certainly for a, for a conversation starter. Um, and I think it uh, is good in a way for that uh, people, I think maybe because when they see, you know, me in the collar and they see the SJ, they feel a, a kind of freedom to direct message me or something like that to, so to, to discuss things that are really on their mind. And I find that to be a very privileged uh, space to be in. Yeah, sure. And one uh, a bit of conversation I've seen you engage in is with uh, folks who uh, are atheists currently. Mm -hmm. You used to mention that you had had that experience yourself. So that I, I, I am assuming that that's what brings you into dialogue is your own experience. But uh, tell me about some of that uh, uh, conversation. Yeah, um, that's, that was one of those things that I, uh, I did not anticipate uh, getting involved in so, so heavily this kind of uh, you know, Christian atheism dialogue, mm -hmm. but um, 
I think a lot of that, how, how they just kind of worked out was uh, um, on one hand, you know, the, the studies and the philosophy of religion and then just kind of conversations with, with, with atheists. Because you, if you post something um, religious very often, you know, atheists will find it and they'll engage you. And um, seeing some of the interactions that Christians have had with, uh, with atheists, uh, they'll just a lot of times be very bitter mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, and you see a lot of dehumanization and demonization uh, on, on, on both sides. And wanting to try and bring a, uh, a humanizing element to sure. it and realizing that we're just, just by virtue of being, you know, fellow humans, we have a stronger bond than we realize, you know, and something that, that goes deeper than our, our world views. And then trying to use those commonalities to try and build bridges. Like, I, I'm not an apologist, <laughs> right. you know? Like, that's not what I do. i just trying to um, help us recognize the goodness of the other. Yeah, yeah. And your uh, presence here means that you have a whole parish that are uh, on your side, you know, that a lot of people are rooting for you out there. So, but I'm wondering, and I'm hoping to, to get to talk to some of the other scholastics as well uh, in this series. So I'll ask you and I'll ask the other folks that I talk to as well, but what, what do you, what would you most like the uh, parishioners here at College Church to know about you and, uh, and your fellow scholastics? Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a question because there are, you know, very limited interactions that we have. Um, so honestly, I feel like the most important thing uh, to know about us is that we can't wait for this pandemic to end. <laughs> so, so we can really get to meet you guys, you know, at, at least people like me who are brand new to the area. Um, what I do hear though from the guys uh, who have been here longer than I have and have, establish some some connections with, with the parish community is there is kind of a you know a, a kind of a, a sense of grief for kind of like, like oh i remember like when we were able to do this that and yada 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 and be with the people and and now we can't yeah. because of all this stuff you know so there is a uh, there is we want to have to establish relationship and connection and those who have that miss the, the, those relationships yeah. well we'll certainly pass that on <laughs> joe thank you for your time today all right thank you for having me appreciate it